The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Tapp, very organized and a little bit of a technical problem, but uh, here we are, the Dow is up 246 on this uh, Wednesday, the 19th of July, 35,195, nicely, into, I'll, show, I'll do this because some of you might not have seen it yesterday. I was discussing that since November the 11th of there we go, I-N-T-U, there it is. Since November the 11th of 2022, I've put one of those dark news cloud cover. I had it as a very short-term rectangle formation, pullback. And whenever I drew this in, and this goes back, let me show you the chart. I'll scroll back a little bit. Look, whenever we had that internal low, internal high, residual high, internal low, residual low, uh, whenever we had that, uh, there was a reversal. But what I said after a period, I'm going to make this a very extended horizontal, narrow horizontal, upper, what I call a dark news cloud cover. Whenever the the Dow, the general market, but I'm using the Dow as, um, as kind of the, um, the focal point here. Whenever the Dow went in above the 34,400 to the 35,700 area, uh, went into this range, there's always bad news out there, but the bad news really affected the Dow in the sense that it took it seriously and started to pull back very sharply. But what I had said for quite some time, I've been looking at this and saying, well, from the visuals, just not mathematically or anything, I'm looking at this, yes, there's a, a shoulder on the left side, a head over here and a shoulder there. This could be a neckline. More importantly, it's not one of my favorite patterns because you've got to recognize it earlier, very much earlier to be able to uh, benefit from it. When this level finally gets taken out after all this time, it means the higher you go and the longer you can stay above, in this particular case, it's the high that was made on the 13th of December of 34,712. The longer you can stay above it, the greater the chances are finally you're turning this whole area into a support, a cushion, a kind of a trampoline area, so that any move down to the 33,000. 400, 600 area should start to find very strong support unless it's really bad news. So at this particular point, what do we have? We're starting to the, – the parts of the news that really were affecting the market, like interest rates, um, just, just the various factors that go into making markets nervous, uh, are all dissipating. And that's the reason why we spiked this high. So let's get out of this right now just to show you there's not only a price time match and I didn't I, I didn't want to draw this in earlier because uh, essentially it wasn't it wasn't really the area that I want to do deal with on this particular chart, but I will do this and I'm gonna get rid of it. I mean to show you that if you go from that high that was made the eleventh of uh, 11th of November and you go to the low that was made right here and this is where we went along remember uh, so I had a question from uh, actually a couple of people one in particular this morning um, who wanted to know about my trading it does it sounds like we do very short term trades well we're still long from the October low of 20 right at the low of October 22 we are still long a position in the Dow from the low that was made right here in March. So, um, and uh, if you consider that to be short term, I wouldn't say that's short term, but yes, we do have very short term trades, but we do have trades that are ongoing right now that have been since April. Um, they, they, they're not swing trades, they're more than, much more than spring trades, they are positions. And now let me show, I'm gonna go from this side to the right side, New parallel, and this is, see, I don't know if it'll show up. I'm going to make that green on the outside, green. Yeah. Nope, it didn't work. Let's make it color green. There it is. Now, let's just pray, place it right here. I want to double check that that was the low. Yes, that was the low. And look, left side, right side, price, time match. 
and it goes to, I've, I've got to get it exact there, and it goes to right there to the 9th of, of June. Well, the 16th was the high. So that worked very nicely as just a, a bar symmetry, but not, not the issue. The issue is that we've broken out. We're up 255 points right now. Money is coming in, and that's very important. Here are a couple of things. The weekly chart of the Dow, it broke into a leg E. The monthly chart is on the leg B. I'll go to these return. Why? Because the SMHs, the semiconductors, have actually gone to an all-time high. Isn't that incredible? They're down a little bit today, but I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. So let me just show you the SMH is down at $1.15 right at 159.09. But you remember we looked at the weekly chart and the weekly chart showed there's a bar symmetry between the high that was made at 159.35 back in January of 2022 to the low that was made in October. So 159 goes to 83.49 and then it comes back. And it doesn't quite get there until uh, last week. But then last week it goes to the high of 159.41, which was the all-time high because the all-time high made a little cup formation between in the weekly chart for the week of, I think it was November the 20-something. Yeah, 26th. 
at 159.41. Then it pulled back, held the 14 period moving average, ran up again, and made a fractional just miss by six cents, seven cents, actually making a new high at 159.35. But that's where the MACD started turning down. Stochastic was weak. On balance volume was very good. And we pulled back very sharply to 83.49. So in the bar symmetry, the number of bars, and I, I'm going to take it first of all to the high of the of January, almost equal to within two points that recovery that was that this month. So this is really interesting. The MACD is very strong. Stochastic's flat at 86. You love that. On balance volume is actually quite low. Uh, it's not overbought at all. So that says over a period of uh, 20, 20, this year, 2023. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me just see if I can change that. Yeah. This is now officially a leg B. It could be G slash B, but I'm calling it a leg B in the monthly chart in the semiconductors, the Van Eck Semiconductor ETF. And one of the reasons is there should still be, and now I'm putting an up arrow, because it broke to a new high, it doesn't have to close there this month. It's already gone above the previous high. That's really important. The MACD in the monthly chart is up. So the stochastic is a little bit overbought. Um, and the monthly stochastic is 86. The on balance volume, as I say, is a little overbought. But the 9 is way above the 14 in the prices way. So this is really bullish. So we should still have a pullback to make a peak B at some point, and then a new leg C, then a pullback to make a peak C, and then a leg D. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Weekly chart in leg D, although the stochastic's at 86, it's becoming a little bit overboard based on the on-balance volume. And if I do the on-balance volume in the daily chart, not, ex not spreading it out, looking at it a very short term in a close-up, it is getting to an overbought situation. If I stretch this out like that, you'll see that the on-balance volume isn't anywhere close to overbought as it was when it went to the high at 155.94 on the 16th. But it is getting there. It's very close. So as I say, and also the work I've, I've done since yesterday, or actually since the weekend going into yesterday on on-balance volume is suggesting that there there. Not because it's an all-time high. I know everybody gets very itchy all-time high. Let's get let's start looking at the short side. That's not really good enough for me. I have to look at it in terms of the context of where we are. But if you look at the – just for the semiconductors, look, the MACD is only now just turned positive. The stochastic only for the last four sessions has gone very positive to 80, 89 percent. And if the stochastic suddenly turns down and goes under 87 – sorry, 78 percent, then you've got to be really careful. It hasn't done that yet. So I would be a little we, – we did take a, a very small one-to-one -one short on the Dow, and yesterday we got stopped out for a very tiny loss on a very on a small position. That's not the issue. The issue is that it was, it was a slightly overbought on balance volume. Now you're getting – look, let me go back to the Dow right now. Look where you are on the on balance volume. It's actually quite weak. Oh. Sorry, I, I meant to say it was on the 120-minute chart that we were looking at. That was a little bit overboard. But the on-balance volume has room to grow here. The stochastic's rallying at 92%. The MACD is good. So I'm not in a hurry, but I, I was mistaken by not saying if we break to the upside, it could, in fact, be the first time that we've gotten this particular pattern in the week in the daily chart with a U that goes to a W formation. And I should have added to the position, we are still long, we call long positions, but as a trading position, we should have, I, I should have done that and I did. So that was a mistake, uh, it cost us at least uh, 34,000, about seven or 800 points. I mean, that's a huge, is that correct? Yeah, uh, on the Dow. Um, of opportunity, and it didn't do anything wrong, but opportunity. So, okay, now within that context, let me just do this. I want to go through this again very quickly because I've got a bunch of questions that I need to answer. SBX is up uh, 21 at 45.76. Now, I just wanted to show you while we're talking about this, here are the Chamwave automated 
resistance lines. Look, this is the SMH. We're right there at 159.63 in the daily, a whole bunch between 155, 157, and 161 in the weekly, nothing in the monthly, and 162 in the 120 minute chart. So we're getting close to a, a resistance, a shorter term resistance area in the semiconductors. Let's go. I spoke about the SP. Look at the SP. Nothing if we break above this. For the weekly chart, but the daily chart is saying 45.66. We're trading at 45.76, so we're starting to push above it. Um, there were a lot at 43.36 in the monthly chart. The very next one is 46.78, 46.78. So uh, kind of a little bit of open territory right at this particular moment. The QQQ and the automated uh, resistance and support levels. We've broken above the 380 resistance and that says we're at 386.56 right now. Nothing in the weekly monthly charts, way up at 402.52. Isn't that interesting? Look, here's your support at 355.48. There aren't any support levels built in yet in the in the weekly and monthly because there hasn't been a pullback. IWM, IWM is up uh, $1.33 at 197.32, 197.05 in the day's re automated resistance levels, 194 to 198. Is that an eight? Yeah, no, it's a six. 196 in the uh, in the uh, weekly chart, and you've got uh, in the monthly 198. And support, there are support levels until you get down to 176. So that's a really interesting. I thought I'd just show you that. Now, here's the other issue. Within the context of the VIX index, the VIX index is up 17 cents at 13.47. Trying to take a stand, trying to say, hey, there are some fund managers that say, I don't believe this. I'm starting to make take some positions uh, to cover any long positions, just as it's kind of security, that's the way it's looking. Look at the monthly chart with a gray, long-term gray at 13, at about 1349. <clears throat> You're at 1349 right now. So it's just at the bottom end of this thick gray uh, horizontal trend line that goes back, way back. So just keep in mind that the volatility index will really function well if it starts to take off and go into the 15.80 to 16.30 level, hold there for one night and then all the way through the close of the next day, open at the level and go even higher. And that'll say, yep, the Dow can start to give back triple, big triple digit gains and the S&P as well. We haven't got there yet. So within that context, as we're signing off right this very second, and please in the den, if you had any questions, put them in. If you have already, put them in. Put, you put them in again because I need to just look. I, I'm using just one one monitor right now, so I haven't got the liberty to Steve call Rhodes it. started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts. 
while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Just real quickly, let me show you something again. Remember, I talked about the long rectangle formation that if you finally get uh, a pop to a D or an E, and then it comes back and takes out halfway of the long rectangle wick, uh, so the long rectangle borders, um, then you should be able to see the price go down towards the lower uh, trend line. And if it holds that, that's going to be positive. If it breaks it, you've got to be careful. Well, it, it held it. It pulled back. Now, I put an up arrow only because of the technicals. But actually, this long extent, this is in the, in the, evening, um, in the evening session. This is where I stretch out peak A. You might wait and you get a B. And then I wait and you get a C and a D. And I keep it as if it's a continuous contract. Not only that, when you've got your 8.30 uh, news or whatever it is early in the morning, and the market does that gyration up and down. Maybe you can get an Eiffel Tower single leg A up and failure pattern. That's where I'm a little bit careful and I have alternate counts. So this has made a breakout to the upside. That means this whole area of 46, uh, 45.95, that's going to be key on the very short term to hold. It must hold. And I still think that the 9 over the 14 in the 10-minute chart of the E-mini says, yep, you could still get a leg D to the upside. The 1-minute did give a little bit of a pullback in time, but I still see some residual strength. Now, you remember we were talking about the channel wave automated resistance levels or support levels. Look, 46.09.50, 46.09 was the automated resistance, and now you've got, uh, it, and it broke the 46.06 support, so it's coming down. So on a very short-term basis, this is exactly 10.20, we're at 10.32. 10.20 now comes the session that says, okay, all those people that th thought that they missed out are now catch trying to play catch up in this first uh, half hour, 40 minutes, 45, 50 minutes. Now we'll see the rest of the session, at least for this section that goes to about 110 when, when Larry does a show at about 110 to 120 this afternoon, uh, right, Eastern time that is. Uh, and we could now start to see a pullback. Is this the high of the day? Um, I, I'd be remiss in saying it's a possibility. But I still see through individual stocks, I still see quite a bit of um, quite a bit of buying pressure coming in. Now, what I want to do is to just go to this particular chart right here. Okay, so the questions came in. Let me get to the questions. Uh, first of all, gold. Uh, do I see gold going much higher? You know, I consider this to be a nice bounce. I'm calling it a bounce, quite a strong bounce. There are some stocks that have had very good percentage moves, very low price stocks in the gold area. Uh, we are all along uh, the GDX. But I'm doing this and saying I, I don't see the big move in gold just yet. I do see a breakout to the upside, and I think it's a trading, uh, something that 
I consider to be a trading long, a shorter term. I had a question uh, about my, my opening call newsletter. Do I have very short term trades? Yes, I do. Only if they get taken out. But mostly we have positions that we would like to hold and we want to add on, especially now we've got positions that have done extremely well and we keep waiting for a pullback to add more to them and they they keep going higher. No, it's a nice, nice complaint position to have, but I, I would prefer to have gotten a bigger position, certainly for subscribers. The other thing is that within the context of what we're looking at, look, the dollar has been given up for dead, which you just never can do that with any anything in the market because that's when it starts to wake up. So even if the dollar only gets back to where it was about a week ago, meaning 101.50, it's at 101.23, to maybe even touch 102, that could put a little bit of pressure on, on the gold. We'll see if that happens. But look, EUR, USD, peak D as we're speaking. So it could pull back a little bit. It broke out above all resistance levels, still way under in the, in the monthly chart. Jab wave inside track repellent zone hasn't even gotten there. It's had beautiful moves like an A to B equals C to D in the daily and the weekly. So I'm just expecting there could be a little bit of a pullback. If you look at the USD, JPY, that's the uh, currency, that's the um, US dollar and Japanese yen currency pair. Made a peak, e top, doji candle, uh, sign in candle, that's what we call Japanese methodology. Sign in doji, either one day, uh, one bar, or one after, one bar before, a t big turnaround. And it's now trying to rally. And the rally itself says it could rally, but it's probably going to fail at some point. So this is what I'm saying. You can get this counter trend bounce, and we'll see how long that lasts. Now, let me just go to this, finish it up here while I can. Uh, U.S. bonds, a nice bounce. You're up at uh, uh, 132nd today, 126.26, 30 seconds. But after being smashed to the downside, you've made it an attempt at a V-shaped recovery from the low that was made in the continuous contract at one. 123 and 830 seconds. But wait a minute. You remember the pattern we always look at that lowercase h can go to a lowercase u. If it holds the left side low, it can start a nice rally back to the middle part. Well, that's what we've got here. So U.S. bonds, I've been seeing for some t for uh, about a year now, stuck in a range. That's the most important thing to think of, that the, the yields are really stuck in a range. They're at the upper end of the range right now, but I'm still thinking range bound. But wait a minute. Crude oil is looking a little different. So the question came in, would you be going long a USO or crude? And all I can say is this 200-period moving average in the daily chart has been resistance. But the MACD is very strong. The stochastics at 79, pulling back, getting if it goes, it goes under 80%, I've got to be a little bit careful here. On balance, volume though is good, and the 9 is way over the 14, and the price is above them. So I like that. And the weekly chart has got the rectangle formation with increasing uh, support from the tacticals, and we are very close to the 9 period moving average for the first time in, oh, in months crossing positive. If that happens, I think we can get into the 80 to 84 area. That's a possibility uh, for crude oil. I'm just saying I need to see it happen because I need to see the 70.76 continuous contract daily 200 period moving average start to become a propellant rather than a magnet or a repellent. So those are things. So I'll make it as clear as I can. If 77.35 Seven, no, 77.75, a close, if it closes over 77.75, maybe making a leg C in the daily, I'll say that's a really good sign on the shorter term for crude oil to be moving a little higher. Now, I think I've covered those things. Now, what I need to cover here is questions that came in. So, Palantir, P P -L -T -R, very strong leg C. It's been on our list. I've got a list that I'm showing subscribers for now a couple of weeks that I've been having some stocks that just are not, not really not having very much of a pullback to, to get entries. So Palantir is take Palantir Technologies develops data fusion platforms trading at eighteen ninety one up eighty three cents. And at this particular point, uh, there the bank D's good stochastics are very good at ninety percent. The on balance volume is a tad overbought. It's in leg C in a new buy mode. And I'm just going to say I believe it's got at least another, what's today, Wednesday. I think it's probably early next week that we start to look at some of these stocks and say, okay, where did they pull back to if they consolidate? So, yes, the question was, how's it acting? And it's acting extremely well. 
Uh, I must congratulate a couple of people in, in the den who have been talking about it and have it. Uh, we, we have not added to this uh, or got, got into it. It's acting very well. Next one was Marvell Technologies. Marvell is in the semiconductor area. Slightly different pattern. Oh, it's a pattern I need to talk about. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignitions Hour. See you in a few moments. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the market with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tax Initials Out. Don't forget my opening call daily newsletter. 6799 was behind the 30th of May for Marvell. MRVL trading at 633 at 57 cents right now. So there's, there was a beautiful rectangle formation at the bottom of a larger rectangle, and it's also got a cup pattern. Also, with a head and shoulders, not a classic one, but it's got the shoulder on the left, and then a head a little lower, and then inverted, and then a shoulder on the right. And now it's moving up in leg C underneath, but it is a buy mode because the stochastic's at 89, the MACD's good, nine's over the 14, prices were over the 14. <clears throat> in the weekly chart, I'm calling that peak that was made back in May a B. And it should still go to a C. So I can't remember offhand what the question was. Let me just see if I can get the question. Uh, was it a something chart? <clears throat> okay, it's uh, question was. 
Oops, I can't find the question. So I'll just do an analysis as if the question is, would you, what should we do right now? And if I'm looking at it correctly, I'm going to say that at this particular point, it's getting close to resistance, both in the daily and the weekly chart. <clears throat> the patterns that I'm looking at suggest that even if it makes a new high, or perhaps even a new recovery high, not a new high, I'm talking about a new recovery high in the daily, it's going to come back into this rectangle. So this is a little different. Normally, I'd say you could start a little position here. You could add to it. I'm just going to say that in this instance, I see maybe two points up, but I can actually see three to four points down over the next two weeks. If this starts to take out 62 support, it's at 66.52, it can go even lower and then stay within the rectangle formation. So the only way I would do this is if you, as a as a preparation for a buy on a big bigger pullback for later in the year where it should go to uh, well it could go to see in, in the next uh, hour or, or week um, in the weekly chart so that'll be different that'll make a leg see in the monthly chart so i like it very much i'm just looking at like it, it's almost as if we've got a bit more of a 10 percent risk if it starts to fail here it looks like it's been lifted up because the semiconductor index has done so well, but it isn't really leading as following. And for that reason, I'm going to say, why not just have a tiny, at 66.44, just get a, just like a tiptoe in, just so that you can get a feel for how it's particip participating together with the market and the SMHs. That's the most important with the SMH ETF. Then, then you can start to add. So just a little tiptoe here, this tiptoe, I don't even know if I'd, I'd say you get a stop on it. Well, you should always have some kind of stuff. Let's just say this one, because it's, you've got a whole 10% stop, and, and I tighten up every day. Um, but just for the initial thing to get in right now. But I, I look at it longer term as being really good. Shorter term, I think it's going to have a little bit of volatility. Next thing, I had a question of D-Dog, just a follow-up from the other day. Uh, D typed it in the wrong place. Typed in over there, should we over here? D Dog. And you remember I said it's looking actually looking quite good. It's even higher today. It's up 286 at 116.66. This is a leg C, I believe. I don't think it made a trough a peak. Right. That's a leg C. And that's the reason why I was thinking to, for subscribers, I don't think this is an appropriate time now to do anything on the short side, just to wait, because there are still a couple of very important stocks in their categories that are in C and you should get a pullback and then again I think it's will be next week that I'm looking at it just a sudden maybe it's a news event pullback we don't have to get it I'm just saying that's kind of the way I, I, I would look at it on the daily price movement this look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten sessions with higher highs and higher lows so any pullbacks there's a lot of buyers shouldn't be too far 116 right now one I'd say 112 to 110 is very strong support uh, for D Dog. Next question came in. Oh, VFC. I think I did this yesterday. Let me just double check. Was this the one? Oh, what I said is the VFC, VF Core. Is this in the clothing industry? I meant to look it up. I can't remember right now. But this is a peak A. This is a peak B. Look, let me show you something here. Here's your starting point. I'm going to put an up arrow just to show the starting point, but the stochastic's not good enough to really confirm that just yet. So this is leg A and then a peak A. There you are. There's your peak A. But wait a minute. The idea is from the initial concept, from this, you've got to count in the waveform every single peak. That's your only obligation. So that says peak A there. Peak A there, gray peak A, gray peak B. Oh, wait, and there's another one right here. Look, A to B to C to D to E. So the obligation from there is to count every peak. There's an A, there's an A, and a, there's a B. There's an A, there's a B, there's a C. Pulls back even deeper. It goes under all of those. It's not the point. You're taking it from that starting point. So that becomes D E. So uh, that's a 
kind of an aggressive way of looking at it. But in the meantime, I, I want to be able to count each peak. It could recycle, doesn't matter, but I'm calling that an E. And now it's broken out, just just like the Dow did, uh, that from the big rectangle formation. So the, the high that was made uh, right here with a double top at, uh, at 20, round number 20, and then again, uh, 1999 says at 20.13 right now, that's a breakout. Now I can look at the next left side high. And that says the next level to look at will be 21.01, the level of 18, 18th of May. That was That's the peak that you would look at as a target to the upside. So finally, I can't remember if I said anything yesterday about uh, doing anything other than nibbling on it. Uh, the monthly chart, the weekly chart, and monthly charts look just absolutely terrible. But the daily is trying to form a base from which it can find support. If you're looking at it just purely visually, you're not looking at it mathematically, but visually, look at this beautiful cup formation and it's breaking out to the right side. So that says at some point, it doesn't have to be now, you could get a one to one from this trough to that high right there. And you could start to look at it like a falling X breakout by saying, that's the level I'd be looking at on the upside. Here we go. VFC is the, uh, if I have a chance, I'll look and tell you what it is in the next break. And I go from that level there. So that, yeah, that corresponds very nicely. There, that's the level just under 20, 20.86. 20 could be the first one to one extension. But let's do one thing at a time. It needs to close above 20, and it's at 20.03 right now. If it can close above 20, it has to do that two out of three sessions and preferably make higher highs, and then you can start to look at that. But it also says 19.30 is really strong. All right. That's it. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So in the moment that we got right, you have to just double check. Look, I've got, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, IBRX was another question I had right here for IBRX. I, oh, look at that sudden down move. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> I was just about to give you an analysis of a pattern that I, I studied years ago. It's the reverse cup and handle. It's the handle and cup. And what I was going to say, this is a pattern from my experience that very often fails on the right side. You'd think that it would break to the upside like you expect in the cup and handle, but this one usually does the opposite. As we're speaking, you suddenly got some news, whatever it is, has come out. Could just be a, we don't get the the, um, the computerized cell programs that we used to get. We get something very different. Anyway, sudden turn down, but there's still some internal buying. So let me just quickly do this as we wrap up. IBRX. Let me just go there if I can. Here we go. IBRX. Oh, I didn't finish with Apple. Let me finish with Apple first. So Apple has a potential for a little bit of a double top, 194.48 to 194.33. So that could be peak C1, C2. We'll talk about a little bit more tomorrow. Uh, and IBRX, I believe that's what we're looking at. IBRX is, oh, yeah. So 200 period moving average of 3.62 is, is resistance, 3.3 and a magnet. It's a trading at 3.31, up 33 cents right now. This is the rectangle formation, and it's going towards the upper end of the rectangle formation. It makes 291 very strong support. All right, now let me just do this quickly. The Dow is uh, still up sharply, giving back quite a bit of the gain. It's up 120. I'm looking at this as a leg. If there is a PD that's made here, that might not be good enough to say, oh, now we go sharp down. We want to see what happens with the stochastic. If the stochastic at 91% over the next four sessions goes under 80%, that's it. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great session.